Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm back, and here's Chappy. Chappy, say hi. Who's there? Okay, he doesn't want to. So I finished doing the gear install on the 8A. I'm just waiting to put it back in. Right now, um, my roommate's working on the lightning, and I just I feel like there's not enough space. There probably is, but for I just don't feel like being too crammed while I'm working on it. Um, so this video, I guess, is going to be a tiny update on the Mustang. Which is, I guess, is bad news slash good news, mainly bad news. And then um, I'm going to be talking about a few things that's in the title above. But I guess on the Mustang engine, the block still isn't built. I know I said that we're going to build the block and everything, but I decided to go with different pistons for several different reasons. Um, the, the other pistons are still fine. They're still here. Let's see where to put them. Oh, there's all my engine stuff. They're still here. They're in this box right there. Um, and they're good. I'll actually be selling them in the future. So if you're interested in getting them, they're 3.78, uh, 10 half to one compression pistons with a plus two CC dome. So, and they're manly pistons. They're, they got a, I got them from Modular Head Shop. I'll be selling them with the rings. I guess $200 less than what you would get it for retail, but that's gonna take a little while to sell them. So the reason why I'm switching is because I decided I wanna build some custom pistons from Wiseco. So that's gonna take, um, that's gonna take about a month to do. Um, so I'm getting ceramic, I'm just getting better pistons is what I'm doing. I, just, I want this engine to last and I don't want it to have as many problems as it could. Um, with the amount of power that I plan on pushing out of it. If you were just trying to build the engine and, and uh, throw boost in it and go further than the stock motor, those other pistons are going to be completely fine. Um, in fact, you could push the limits on it pretty easily. So, um, I guess we could talk about what all goes into building an engine. And then I'm going to write on a piece of paper. I had like a big wooden board that I used to just write on. And um, in one of the previous videos, you might have seen it, but I don't know where it went. So I can't write on that. I'll just write on a piece of paper and I'll show you what, what all goes in as far as my engine build. Now, if you're doing an engine build for a 3.7 Mustang, um, you can either do just a regular forged internal build, um, and that would just be pistons, rods, throwing them in. Um, and really, it's not as simple as throwing it in. And it's really not only pistons and rods. It kind of has to do with how far you want to go with the build. Um, so let's start off. You have your pistons, which you have to choose whether you want to go manly. Um, with these Wiseco pistons, I might actually be interested in the future with selling like these because I'm having them designed and everything like that. So it might be interesting. So, so there's like manly, Wiseco, which future would be Wiseco. And... Um, and what you would call it, what's diamond pistons. So you either have really, 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 really expensive pistons that I think I got quoted $1,400 for everything that I need for the diamond pistons, which I mean, if I had a sleeve block and I was looking to do a really, really awesome build, I think that that would be the way to go. But just for my power levels for what I'm shooting for, I'm shooting above 700 horsepower. I don't think I need to spend $1,400 on pistons. I just feel like that's way too much. I'm getting these custom made. And then in the future, I'll be able to sell. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to sell them um, for a lot less than that for everything. Rings, wrist pins, all that. And then coated skirts. So, um, so we got pistons. Then we have rods. There's two major ones. You can either get the Manly H-beam rods. Those are like $600, maybe more, maybe less. It, it depends on if you want to get the rod bolts, the ARP 2000 rod bolts, or you can get the I-beam rods, which those are what I had. Those, they were $1,200. So I got them because I didn't know that you could get the H-beam rods somewhere else. MMR was the only place at the time that I knew of that offered stuff, and I just couldn't find, I couldn't find them. Um, and they weren't willing to sell them apart from the pistons. So I got them from Liver Noise for $1,200. Everywhere else sells those I-beam rods for around $1,200. So we went to rods. Um, there's one other company I think that Nautilus Performance might have different brand of rods. And then, um, then you have to go into fasteners. What do you want? Do you, are you gonna just use OEM fasteners? If that's the case, you have to buy brand new all OEM fasteners, which would, 
everything. I mean, all we have six bolt mains. Um, your main caps are what hold the crankshaft into the block, and we have six bolt mains on each one, and all of them are torqued to yield. So if you want to stick with that, the head bolts are torqued to yield. If you want to do that, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, because if you ever have to open up the block again, you have to replace all of those again. Um, if you want to do it right, you could do the sloppy mechanics way and just not and just reuse them. But I would not recommend that, and I don't think that's a good idea. Now, um, I think if you wanted to do all ARP, your the mains I think from Nautilus are 360 head bolts from Nautilus are like 305. For some reason, Super 6 Motorsports, they have, which that's where I got my head, not head bolts, I got my head studs from there. Um, the ARP 2000 were 424, and they had ARP studs, but they weren't ARP 2000. I don't know what, what the difference was between them, um, and I don't know why all the competitors just have ARP 2000 for like $100 less. But that's where I ended up getting my um, head studs from, just because they were available, and also they gave me a discount. So we have fasteners that can add up either $600 or if you get side main bolts as well side yeah side main bolts from ARP that's maybe another $125 so you're in like $700 at the minimum or you could be all the way up to if you get everything from Super 6 I think it's maybe $1,200 maybe even more so anywhere from seven to twelve hundred depending on where you're getting them from then you add in bearings um, if you're then you add in bearings. If you're doing the, the crankshaft and you have the OEM crankshaft and you haven't spun anything, um, you could probably just keep the main bearings if they look like they're in good condition. And then you would have um, rod bearings, which if you wanted to upgrade, I mean, I would do rod bearings, yes, if you're getting new rods, that's kind of like you should do that. Um, you could get OEM ones, and I think that maybe adds up to like 50 to $100. It just depends on your dealership. So that's, that's that, and then machine work. If you're doing just machining, if you wanted to do the assembly of the block yourself, like I am, and, um, machine works anywhere from 600 to 800. Now that would include doing a, a hone, a machine hone, to clean up the, the cylinders, a main line hone, and then cleaning up the block so they could do the machining, and then um, balancing your rotating assembly because those those pistons and rods are most likely going to weigh different than the old pistons and rods so they're going to have to balance your crankshaft so that it doesn't vibrate so that that's probably six to eight hundred dollars maybe even more if you depending on where you live so that's something to take into consideration now if you're not doing the the short block and long block assembly that could be another six hundred to thousand dollars wherever you live so really you're talking about maybe even five like anywhere from thirty five hundred to fifty five hundred dollars for an, a simple engine build that doesn't include if you wanted to get head supported if you wanted to get cams if you wanted to do any other stuff that's just a, your simple like short block build for me it's really cheap because my my machinist is my roommate and he's he's giving me a pretty good deal on it and i'm doing all the assembly myself so if you wanted to do stuff yourself it gets quite a bit cheaper so i'm gonna write down everything so you could take a picture of it or something and just take a look at it all right sorry i was writing down a bunch of the shims and stuff i just finished doing a gear install on my 8 8 and switched to 331s so i'm just going to run through this really quick on paper so you could see it so for a basic build you have pistons 550 dollars for i guess just your regular manly pistons that doesn't include rings i think it does include wrist pins though so you'd have to add on an extra two hundred dollars for wrist pins for the fourteen hundred dollars that was quoted that was for um nine to one compression but that did include rings so you want to include the piston rings down here so that was everything for the pistons rods depending on if you go to h beam or i beam it's anywhere from 600 to 1200 and it could be more than 600 if you get um, the arp rod bolts that are bigger your fasteners if you went oem everything yeah it's a lot cheaper but you if you ever have to redo anything on on the block if you ever have to pull the heads off again oh i didn't even include head gaskets but if you ever have to redo anything, um, if you ever have to redo anything, you have to pay again for those bolts. So then you have torque to you. Uh, then you have ARP that ranges anywhere from 600 to 900. I would do a mix of them. 
Um, for the side mains, I would probably just go with the, the OEM fasteners that are torque to yield, and then I'd go with um, ARP girdle and main cap studs, and then um, head studs as well. So you'd probably be in about like $700, maybe more, maybe less. Um, bearings, anywhere from 150 if you're replacing all of them, an OEM, to $400. Um, if you got like calco coated, I think that's the name. I could be a complete idiot and, and whatever. I'm just doing OEM bearings. Um, your machine work that varies. That actually could be outside this window as well, depending on where you live, but 600 to 900. Your engine assembly is um, 600 to 1,000 if you're not doing this yourself. I wouldn't do this yourself unless you had someone helping you or you, you're really good at um, vehicles. You can use all data. But um, I, if you've never worked on a car before, I wouldn't be assembling an engine. If you do a lot with cars, I, I, I'd recommend you could just help have a friend to help you out. Um, piston rings, $200, had gaskets, 50 bucks. Okay, so you end up around like 2,800 all the way to like six grand. I'd say you're really gonna be in the middle. Like, you're that's probably not impossible. If you're paying six grand, you're doing like, all the highest price for everything um, so that's probably not if you're doing just a basic engine build you're probably not going to spend that much so it's probably going to be realistically anywhere from 3500 to 4500 and I think that really depends on if you're assembling the engine yourself or not um, like I said earlier it's not like super easy but if you're if you have someone who's done an engine assembly before, you can do it if you're good with vehicles. Um, the other thing I haven't put in here is I did play. I did pay for a torque plate. That was three hundred dollars, um, but that's mine. I can use it for any other engine build I ever do, or I can sell it. Uh, most machine shops won't have a torque plate for the 3.7. However, there's that whole thing of uh, that you could do a machine hone on an open deck without a torque plate. A, a bunch of Honda guys have been doing it for years. Um, for me, I obviously ended up getting one, but that's just your, you can have your own debate about that and talk to other people. I'm not going to go into that. So yeah, 3,500 to $4,500. Um, realistically is where you would be if you were doing an engine build so yeah your internals are like fifteen hundred dollars or so and that's like oh that's not too much also the other thing to keep in mind is you can't find a crankshaft for these anymore for discontinued making them now for those of I got when I posted on one of the forums everyone was like oh they can't do that that's illegal the reason why they legally can do it is because they offer a short block so if you did it for a warranty and you came in and you, you like spun a crankshaft, dealerships, they don't build engines. They don't machine engines. They don't have all those machines to do it. They typically will just throw in another block or throw in the same with like transmissions. They don't rebuild that. That doesn't make sense for them. So they would actually just get um, something like a Ford still has hundreds of short blocks left. So those are still for sale, but you can't buy just a crankshaft. So that that is an important thing to consider. If you... If you're planning on building your engine when you blow it up, you better hope that you don't spin a rod bearing or else you're gonna have to go crankshaft hunting or buy another block or do something, which that would be, that, that'd really suck and could set you back quite a long time. For me, my entire process of building an engine has kind of been a little bit of a nightmare. Um, with the first machinist, what happened with that, um, with the pistons and everything like that, and then also all the bearings had to be replaced. Um, I don't know if I have the bearings. No, I don't have them. All the bearings had to be replaced, even though he said that I could just reuse those bearings that were brand new. I only put a thousand miles on them and they all had grooves all over them. So I've had to spend several things two times. The first time I did it, I did all torque to yield fasteners. So um, this time I went with therapy everything. So I never have to do that again. Cause once you do it twice, you really are wishing that you would have just bought the ARP stuff that was better to begin with. So that's the conversation about building an engine. Um, I'll just, I'll keep kind of 
for those of y'all who stayed this long and heard me ramble, which is like probably 15 of you guys, um, I'll show you everything that I have, how I have everything laid out here. <laughs> There's Chappie. Uh, so I have the rear end that's going in soon. This is an old block. Um, this is the one that's getting built. I have valve covers here. Kind of miscellaneous engine parts. I have the heads here that are covered with some stuff and soaked in oil. Um, I painted this tying cover. I think it looks pretty dope. And then all my real important engine components are all in these tubs. And here's the poor engine bay. So I did install a tubular K member. So that's pretty cool. There is there was already a tubular um, radiator support. And so I'm excited to get this project done. It'll be pretty cool to see it done and actually have a running car. But I'm probably thinking it's going to be another two months, maybe even three. I really hope not that much. But that's it. That's that's the end of the video. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If, feel free to hit that like button down below if you like the video. If not, dislike it and just rage on how stupid I am for talking about V6s for 30, 20 minutes. I don't even know how long this is going to be. But thanks for watching, guys. Chappy. Chappy. Say bye. Here. Oh. Thanks for watching, guys. We're out.